everybody. I wanted to focus on one particularly confusing section. I'm going to read it out to you, and then I'm going to explain it as we go. Uh, it's on the top of page 13, and it begins with, of course, having allowed oneself to drift, unresisting, unpraying, accepting every half-conscious solicitation from our desires, we reached a point where we no longer believed the faith. Just in the same way, a jealous man, drifting and unresisting, reaches a point at which he believes lies about his best friend. A drunkard reaches a point at which, for the moment, he actually believes that another glass will do him no harm. The beliefs are sincere in the sense that they do occur as psychological events in the man's mind. If that's what you mean by sincerity, then yes, they are sincere, and so are ours. But errors which are sincere in that sense are not innocent. What's he saying there? He's saying that certainly, of course, you may have arrived at this confusing state of mind by gradual regressions in the same way that the spirits from hell gradually move apart from one another. Sure, we can say that you gradually arrived at this thought process, but so can we say that you gradually arrived at a state of complete drunkenness and then believe that the next move, the next drink, isn't going to do you any harm. In a similar way, the next move philosophically in thinking that the resurrection must not be the case, must not be real, is, is in a sense just like the next drink. Sure, you think that it's the right thing to do, but in fact, it leads you further and further down the path to sickness, right? And that's, that's really what um, Dick is trying to get involved with here. That's what he's trying to uh, communicate to the theologian, is that certainly we were having these conversations, but even though they gradually progressed into something that was terrible, doesn't make them at all good. Another thing that he harps on that I want us to focus on is this. Dick explains that he's been talking about the past. And he says, I have been talking of the past only in order that you may turn from it forever. He lists all of these wrongs that the theologian has committed, not so that the theologian can just sit with all of the things that he's done terribly, but rather so that we can recognize the flaws, the fallacies that are there in his logic, and then might turn from it. And again, that's what he repeats whenever he says, I'm not trying to make a point. I'm telling you to repent and believe. There's no philosophical next step for this conversation. It's a simple truth that you have to accept. God loves you. The truth is here in heaven for you to experience. And it is absolute. There is a real reward and at the same time a real risk here. Finally, we come to the same problem that we've had with all of our previous spirits. The need to be needed. Look at the bottom of the page. I should want to guarantee that you are taking me to a place where I shall find a wider sphere of usefulness and scope for the talents that God has given me, and an atmosphere of free inquiry, in short, all that one means by civilization and uh, the spiritual life. What's he saying here? He's not actually concerned with the spiritual life. He wants to be useful in heaven. He wants to be useful as a theologian. The whole point of theology is to lead us to the fullness of love and God himself. The pursuit of theology isn't for its own sake. And we'll see this in a very particular um, analogy that uh, the Spirit will give on the next page, I believe. Why is this important? It's to point us to the reality that we're supposed to be focusing on and not think about these things that we do on this earth as affecting ultimate reality. The theology that we do here is at the service of bringing us closer to God. But in heaven, once we have the opportunity to be close to God, there's no more need for theology. There's only the need to be close to God. This is something that the theologian can't understand because he's so focused on having heaven his own way. On our next lecture, we'll focus more on, uh, and I believe concluding, um, what the Spirit's conversation will look like here. And then... Uh, yeah, and I hope that you'll find the next part to be kind of interesting.